Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathshala. My name is Dr. Priyanka and I teach Anthropology at the Department of Anthropology, Dr. Hari Singhor University, Sagar, MP. Today, we are going to discuss about the module which consists of gene flow and mixture genetics. This module comes in the paper of human population genetics. So, let's see what we are going to learn in this module. In this module, we will be covering in detail about gene flow and its consequences on the population. We will study the various models of gene flow. We will also see some examples of gene flow which have existed in human populations. So, let's begin. Contact between human groups also has a genetic implication where the movement of allele from one population to another population can cause change in the allele frequencies. On the broader level, gene flow can be seen as the evolutionary glue holding populations in a species together. On the contrary, reduction or elimination or prevention of gene flow is necessary to initiate the process of speciation. Gene flow is also known as migration, which is nothing but the movement of individual from one population to another. These two words, that is gene flow and migration, are usually taken synonymously with each other. However, there is a difference. Gene flow happens because of the migration, but it is not necessary that every migration results to the gene flow. Gene flow includes lots of different kinds of events. For example, people moving from one city to another city or from one country to another country is an example of gene flow. In terms of a plants, we can say the dispersion of pollen grains can also comes under the category of gene flow. In population genetics, gene flow is the transfer of alleles or genes from one population to another. During this process, both inward and outward movement of individual produces marked change in the allele frequencies. Immigration results in the addition of new genetic variants into the established gene pool of a particular species or a population. See the reverse of it. Emigration, on the other hand, might result in the loss of genetic variants from already established gene pool of a population. Admixture genetics. By this term, we mean the genetic structure of the hybrid or admixed population. The neighboring populations frequently exchange individuals that contribute to ongoing process of bidirectional gene flow between themselves. It occurs when individuals from two or more previously separated population begin interbreeding. And mixture gene flow result in the introduction of new genetic lineages into a population. It is known to slow local adaptation by introducing foreign unadapted genotype. It also prevents speciation by homogenizing populations. In terms of anthropology, many population evolved from genetic admixture caused by major migration during the entire evolutionary history of mankind. The admixed individual therefore show a genetic characteristics commonly found in both parental populations. When the contributing parental populations are genetically very dissimilar, the admixed or the hybrid population generally resembles to each of the parental ones in some respect. In fact, most often their genetic constitution is somewhere in between those of the contributing parental populations. In describing the population structure of a mixed population, therefore, it is important to identify the mixing elements and the proportion by which mixture has been taken place. Quantitative assessment of a mixture is generally made through the estimation of a mixture proportions. When a hybrid population consisting of G from P parental group 
the proportion contribution of these ancestral group in the total gene pool of the hybrid population are defined as admixture proportion and if the time depth of admixture is known these proportional contribution can be converted into the rates for population genetic consideration this con conversion of proportion into rates is necessary in order to study the consequence of migration on the change of the gene frequencies the given figure shows that the common feature of both the parents 1 and 2 in the child and in and even after many generation some traits of the parents are still observed in their descendants now let's come to the evolutionary impact of gene flow gene flow affects the evolution in many ways like first of all the introduction of new alleles into the population the only way of new allele to enter in a population is either through mutation or the recombination the two other evolutionary processes such as drift and selection can increase or decrease the frequency of a new mutation or new variation all the mutation is the ultimate source of all new allele a new mutant allele can be introduced into the different population through gene flow gene flow allows the spread of new mutants into different populations of a species subjects in each population to the further effect of drift and selection another evolutionary impact of gene flow is the reduction of genetic differences between populations the main impact of gene flow is to reduce the genetic differences between population we can understand this by using the analogy of mixing paint colors to understand this principle let's imagine two canes of different colors one containing red paint and another containing white paint take a cup of a paint from the red cane and mix it with the white cane and at the same time take a cup of a white paint and mix it into the red cane after mixing you will observe that a cane of a red paint is slightly lighter and the cane of a white paint is slightly pinker if you repeat the mixing the color of the paint in the two canes will become increasingly similar after enough cups of paint have been swapped and mixed you will have two identical canes of pink paint although alleles are not paint and do not actually merge together The point here is the mixing of gene pools can alter the allele frequencies. Now to explain how gen gene flow takes place between population, several models of gene flows has been proposed. Some of the models shows how gene flow works in nature. The first one being the island model. The simplest place to start with understanding how gene flow work is to examine the case of one way migration as shown in the island model this model was given by right in this we can imagine an island that receives a certain amount of migration from the mainland in this way we can see what effect gene flow from the mainland has on the allele frequency of the island The another model is a two-way gene flow. The island model focus on gene flow in one direction and allele frequency does not change in the source population that is the main plant or in terms of population genetics the meta population. Although this model fits some cases a model that allows gene flow in the two direction is more applicable to many situation. In short where island model is only one directional exchange of the genes the two way gene flow is bidirectional in nature another model is a kin structured migration the examples using two way gene flow show clearly that gene flow acts to make population more similar to each other over time and that the higher the rate of gene flow the more rapidly this convergence occurs 
gene flow is most often considered a homogenizing force that reduces the genetic difference between populations. However, this is technically correct only if we assume that the individual that migrate and reproduce are a random sample of the source population. But this is not always the case. In some situations, the migrants may be related. One way that migrants can be related occurs in some small-scale human societies when part of a population splits off and then fuses with another population. There are other examples of entire families moving into the new population and contributing to the gene pool. In the nutshell, this means when a migrant is unrelated, we call such kind of a gene flow as a kin-structured migration. Besides these models, there are another models such as stepping stone model, which show higher genetic exchange between geographically proximate population. And we also have a reverse model of stepping stone model known as isolation by distance, which says that increasing geographical distance decreases the gene flow between the populations. Now come to the methods of estimating admixture proportions. A wide variety of methods of estimating admixture proportions have been proposed utilizing data of various kinds. The first one to start with is a method from frequencies of single allele. It was given by Bernstein. He was the first to use the allele frequency data in hybrid and parental population to estimate the proportional contribution of the ancestral stroke in the hybrid population. The next method is a method of least square estimates from the frequencies of multiple alleles. Bunstein method of calculating frequencies of a single allele has disadvantage. Namely, it is limited to admixed population derived from only two ancestral population. In order to deal with the populations of multi-parental origin and to obtain estimates from multi-allelic loci, another method was proposed. This method is known as a least square approach to estimate the X mixture components of all contributing population that constitute the gene pool of an admixed population. Their method essentially used the basic principle of the Bernstein equation on the supposition that admixture affects all loci or all the alleles equally and simultaneously. The resulting estimation equation which expresses each allele frequency in the admixed population as a linear combination of respective allele frequency in the ancestral population provide the same constants. The next method is a method of maximum likelihood estimate from multiple alleles. This method was first attempt to show that the allele frequency in the parental population are known without error but a sample of phenotype distribution from the hybrid population is drawn following multinominal sampling. Assuming that the hybrid population is at hardy weinberg equilibrium, the expected allele frequency in the admixed population is obtained as calculated by Bernstein equation. The phenotype or genotype probabilities can then be represented as a function of the known allele frequencies in the parental population and the unknown admixture components. Writing the likelihood function as the multinominal probabilities for the sample of phenotype distribution, maximization of the log likelihood function can be done by the newton raphson method. Another method in the list is a mixture estimate based on the genetic distance. Polzer was the first to derive estimates of admixture proportion based on genetic distance between the hybrid and parental population. He noted that the contribution of the parental stock to the hybrid population should be inversely proportional to squares of the distance of the parents from the hybrid. While intuitively it is clear that with the increasing gene flow, genetic distance should decrease, the exact relationship 
need not to be an inverse function, particularly with the choice of the distance measure. The last method in the list is a method based on genetic identity. The problem with admixture estimate based on genetic distance can be circumvented if one considers suitable measure of genetic similarity instead of genetic distance. For example, if genetic similarity is defined by, gen by gene identity, which is nothing but the probability that the two genes chosen at random from one or more populations are identical, it can be expressed as a linear function of admixture proportions. During colonial times, hundreds of thousands of Africans were enslaved and brought forcibly to the USA as a part of slave trade. Starting in 1619, the slave trade grew and the importance of enslaved Africans was widespread. Speaking at the end of 18th century, there has been gene flow occurred before the prohibition of slavery. Generally, when European men would mate with form mating between European Americans and African Americans following the relaxation of social barriers to interracial marriages. European gene flow into African American population is an example of the process of admixture as described and the genetic marker data can be used to estimate the accumulated European ancestry in African Americans. Some studies have used the simple model of the two parental populations that is Europe and Africa while some have looked at more complex models that take into account possible admixture from Native American sources. The earlier studies soon found that there is no single or simple answer to the question of how much European ancestry exists in African American. Genetic history is not the same in all the populations. The variation in European ancestry is shown clearly by the comprehensive study of African-American genetics conducted by Stan Bin Para and colleagues. Here, they examined genetic markers from nine loci that exhibited large difference between Europeans and Africans and estimated admixture proportion in 10 different African-American population in the United States. They found that the amount of accumulated European ancestry ranged from 12% to 23%. These estimates were based on autosomal genetic markers. Para et al. also examined admixture estimate based on mitochondrial and Y-chromosomal DNA markers, which allow us to look at the different evolutionary histories of males and female lineages. The mitochondrial DNA analysis showed European ancestry ranging from 0% to 15%, whereas the estimates from Y-chromosome DNA marker ranged from 9% to 47%. More relieving is the male lineage than in the female lineage. These results suggest that over the past few centuries, there have been more European genes coming from the mating of Euro European-American females with Africa, American males. As noted above, in pro-slavery times, the majority of interracial matings were probably between the male European descent and an enslaved female of African descent. This pattern appeared to be reflected in the mitochondrial and Y-chromosomal DNA analysis as well. In the last 40 years, there have been more marriages between the black husbands and the white wives the 1990s. This was the recent demographic shift result in an increase in the maternal component of European ancestry in African Americans, but it has not noticeable effect on the genetic history of past event. Keeping in mind that all these estimates are based on genetic makeup of the entire population and the admixture proportion of the population do not necessarily apply to every person in that population. Each person has its, her, his or her own unique genetic history and our population estimates are simply statistical aggregates of these histories. Now let's move to the another case study of Irish travellers. There are small numbers of nomadic groups living in Europe including the Roma of Central and Eastern Europe. 
one of these group are the Irish travellers who make up a very small percentage, less than 1% of the population of Ireland. The travellers are social group that moves around the countryside performing odd jobs, seasonal labours and scavenging scrap metals among, among their activities. There have been several ideas about the ancestral origin of these Irish travellers. Some of these hypotheses focus on the idea that the travellers are the descendants of Irish who were displaced from their land, becoming an isolated social group over time. Another idea is that they represent a mixture of Irish and Romani gypsies. The difference between these two set of ideas can be tested using genetic data. Crawford et al. computed genetic distance between the sample of Irish travellers and a number of European and Asian population based on red blood cell genetic markers. They found that the travellers were more similar to other Irish population and more different from other population, including several gypsy samples. They concluded that the genetic data supports the hypothesis of an Irish origin of the Irish travellers. Another analysis of the same data using different comparative samples find the same result. The cultural similarity to some aspects of a gypsy lifestyle is coincidental and does not reflect ancestry. As is often the case with the human population, culture is independent of genetics. It is likely that genetic drift has had an important effect on genetic variation in the traveller population. The small size of the traveller population and the high variance in fertility suggest a relatively low effective population size which would increase the likelihood of the drift in these populations. Drift is also suggested from the studies of metabolic disorders known as transferase deficient galactosemia that show much higher frequencies among Irish travellers than among the other travellers but due to the specific mutation known as Q188R which also accounted for 89% of the muted allele for the cases among the non-travellers. Screening of the overall population shows that the allele frequency of this particular polymorphism is much higher among the travellers than among the non-travellers. Now this mutation arose in Ireland and attained an elevated frequency among the travellers because of genetic drift. Some of the results showing differences might be due to initial founder effect and some due to continued genetic drift in the subsequent generations. So students, let us summarize what we have learned from this module. In this module, we have seen the concept of gene flow. Gene flow is a movement of individual and therefore genetic material they carry from one population to another. Gene flow results in addition of new genetic variants to the established gene pool of a particular species or a population. In terms of anthropology, most of the populations evolved from genetic admixture caused by major migration that have occurred during the entire evolutionary history of mankind. We have also seen that the admixed individual have genetic characteristics commonly found in both parental population and when the contributing parental population are genetically very dissimilar, the admixed population generally resembles to each of the parental one in some aspects. The only way that we have seen a new allele enter in a population is through mutation. Whereas, the other evolutionary process such as drift and selection can increase or decrease the frequency of a new mutation. But, both the process cannot bring about new allele. Gene flow is the only process which allows the spread of new mutants through a species, subject in each population to further effects of drift and selection. The main impact of gene flow as we have understood by this module is to reduce genetic difference between the populations. There are several models of gene flow which we have covered in this module. The simplest being Ireland model 
in which gene flow occurs from meta population to island population or in other words we can say gene flow happens between the main pedental population to small subpopulation another model which we have seen is two way gene flow in this model the rate of migration is same in both the directions there are other examples of entire families moving into new population and when the migrants are related we have called this kind of a gene flow as kin structured migration some of the case study of population admixture have also been seen in this module they are peopling of a new world the origin of irish travelers and a mixture in african american thank you